<laughs> you can hear me. Hi. <laughs> you can hear me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for another great week of Cricket Chat. It's a beautiful day here in New England. April 19th, also Patriot's Day in New England, or well, actually in Massachusetts, Maine, and Wisconsin. So um, happy Patriot's Day if you are a celebrator of Patriot's Day, um, and as am I. So um, hello, how are you? I had to um, to uh, skip yesterday's brunch with the uh, joy and I apologize for that I was in the middle of something that was very unexpected but no biggie um, no really big problem there just just uh, what didn't have my head on straight to have a show <laughs> you gotta take a day off once in a while you know um, and let's see, and today, this week, this is my son's uh, vacation week, but we're going to do a whole lot. Good morning, David. We're going to do a whole lot, hi, Nikki, of really fun stuff this week, including because it's Earth Week or Earth Day coming up. Um, and so we're going to be doing a couple of flowers, including a Gerbera. That's how I'm told to pronounce it, Gerbera. Daisy, um, and hopefully an oversized, like a really large size dahlia. And um, what's the other one? I have been considering doing these hydrangea in a pot that uh, from Dreaming Tree, also very nice. And because it's spring and the pollen is out, I thought I would show you how to put together a... Um, tissue box. So there's that. And what else did I have coming? I have a couple of cards that I want to show you. Um, and today I thought that we would talk a little bit about mugs because I feel like I need to do a mug a week at least. And um, so this week I thought we would work on um, just the whole idea of sublimation. Sorry, I have this so beautiful out. I have the window open. So, of course, people are going by. And so you'll hear some noise there. Um, but uh, I, I, like a lot of you, got a sublimation printer around the time that the mugs were out. And yesterday or Saturday, I received a really nice um, message from someone who had checked with Cricut and wanted to know how to use a sublimation mug with the mug press and they didn't know which you know it could happen um and so they didn't know and were curious about it themselves so i um they had watched one of my videos and they said that was um, really helpful so my sister who's been so kind to me and it's been um you know a year that she that she started helping me with my um when I had cancer and doing a lot of my errands, she is a huge fan of friends. Um, and so I thought that I would make her a mug. So I did this one with some images that were uh, like part of a mystery box from last December. And this, if you don't know, this is uh, Central Perk is the place where I'm going to forget her name, Rachel, I think it was Rachel worked and they all hung out at. So I took some of those images and I um, set them up with offset and then I cut them out on my sublimation printer. Um, and I wanted to show you, you don't have to just do it with these images, but I wanted to show you start to finish how this works. Um, and and uh, also kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the sizing thing, thank you, Penny, um, the sizing thing that changed over the week, last week and in, over into the weekend. So if you have got a new, uh, what do you call it, a new update in Design Space, kind of wanted to tell you what that update was about. Um, and so you've never seen Friends? I, 
honestly, it's not my favorite show. I watched it once in a while. My sister was one of those really big fans of Friends. So um, I actually have some Wonder Woman, which I really love Wonder Woman. So I have some Wonder Woman um, and also some some just like motivational uh, subs that I did that I want to show you Um so we don't have to just do friends, but you might want to know how there was also some elf uh, images and I think there was something else besides elf. Filthy. Was it? No, I think it was friends and elf and I don't know what the other one was. Anyway, um, I uh, hope you're all well. I, I know it was kind of a 90s thing. My sister, you know, she just loved, loved, loved that show. I think she still watches it in reruns. Um, and, and so I wanted to uh, give her another mug. I gave her when I first started, you know, a month ago. I can't believe it's been over a month since that mug press came out. But a month ago, I gave her the one with the cats. Feeling great, feline great. But I thought this would be great. And she's been talking about uh, she, uh, she wants a sweatshirt with this, but she can't find the right sweatshirt that she wants. So I figured, hey, I'll just make a mug. And actually, um, she has a girlfriend that uh, that loves it, too. So I'm going to make her another one that says I'd rather be watching Friends. And that's how it looks. This is from the sublimation printer. And I want to show you how to use, if you got one, um, how to use the sublimation printer um, with your Cricut Design Space, because that was a big leap for me to figure that out. But it really wasn't that um, difficult. You know, it really wasn't that difficult. So I wanted to sort of show you that. Also, can I just mention that this is the last week you can get your name in for Cricut, um, well, not for Cricut, for my giveaway for Cricut Joy, Bundle of Joy. And um, I want to encourage everyone, even if you're already following me, to get your name in. And all you have to do, um, there will be a link at the end of this uh, video in the description. Um, or if you're watching this on the replay, all you need to do is follow that link. And there's three things to get three entries into the giveaway. There's, um, you need to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Now, the only one that's required is YouTube. So the extra ones, Facebook and Instagram are extras. So you'll get actually three entries. But if you don't do Instagram, you'll get still get two entries. So that's good too, you know. Um, and let's see. Uh, so that's going on. I'll be picking a winner for Saturday night. So I think it ends at midnight on Friday. Friday. So definitely get your name in. If you're already following me, share or comment or like or do all of that stuff. And um, the, uh, the goal is to increase the number of people that watch our program. Maybe they're not going to be our regular cricket craft Cricket chat, what does Emmy call it? Cricket chat crafters, um, which is like every day, <laughs> you know, watching. I know you have, there are th those, thank you so much that watch every day. But for people who maybe catch the show once in a while, um, I want to make sure at least they're getting the notifications that there is a new show up. Okay. Um, and so let us get started. There's that. Oh, wanted to um, mention that I got a lot of infusible ink in. There was a huge sale. I don't know if it's still going on, but um, if you are new to the mug press, you might want to check it out because there, there's tons of infusible ink now available on sale. And then you can use my link. Um, and if you're already a Cricut Access member, you'll also get additional savings. So I think it's 40% off and then you get 10% off for, um, for using my link and code, which is Miss Rita 10. And, um, yay, Bren, you got your maker working. Yay, Leilani. Oh, a lot of, a lot of things going on. Leilani got her second shot. 
and the maker came in or got working with Bren and a lot of people have their um their mugs so um oh and someone's sick Don Don is sick I'm sorry Don um so uh so if you are interested in the mug press you can get sort of this um this big roll of infusible ink which you can cut on your all of your machines you just have to cut down if you want to use on the Cricut Joy okay so I don't want people to feel like if they got the mug press and only have the Joy they can only use those new Joy infusible ink sheets because these older ones are a great deal right now um, and this was one of my favorites although I think it's now out of stock but it's called Mermaid rainbow and it has four sheets and I think I got it for nine dollars um and then I got 10 percent off and no I got 10 percent off using my code and 20 percent off because I'm an access member okay so um there's that. Okay. So the so it's not really big news. So the news was there was an update on design space and the main thing that it changed was being able to um oh, there's my mug press telling me it's been on too long. Um the main thing yeah, I know, Nikki, we're going to talk about that a little bit, okay? Um, so the main thing that's changed is about sizing, and that's why I'm here under projects, because I wanted to show you what um, this all entails. So there are a number of projects that have different sizes, and masks are one of them. Is this mask? Yeah. So masks are one of them. So here's a project for an anti-fog face mask, and you'll see next to it this is what you'll be seeing so here's the mug mystic mug set it says two sizes and this one is anti-fog face mask three sizes so when you click on them and I want to show you where's the other one that's the um, mug design setup. Um, so when you click on them, it, depending on what the project is, you'll either be uh, asked to immediately cut it, and that's usually with the face mask. So let me show you that because they don't want you to to um, do a different size or anything. So um, you would choose uh, in this drop down box small medium or large and they give you the um the dimensions here so you would choose one or the other and then you'd hit make it but with the um but with the uh, uh, uh mugs let me go to the mug saying um this mug set up see this mug design set up it says it has 10 sizes and let me click on that and so I'll tell you why it has 10 sizes it has actually different edges plus the medium size mug and the large size mug so there's two size mugs right there's a 12 and a 15 ounce size mug and um, in this particular case they have a straight edge which is what they have here they also have ripped edge scalloped edge wavy edge and zigzag edge so if you're starting from scratch um i would suggest you go to this mug design setup and it's like kind of the basic basic one even if you're going to be um using not using a full mug wrap it's really helpful to understand the um sizing okay so once you choose small straight edge you'll notice down here we cannot make it because we have to customize it so we have to go to customize and what you will get this is where I start with all my mugs because it's just a basic mug design setup and it allows me to sort of make some changes here and you'll notice that it has actually these little these three little guides you're not going to cut them they're just to help you like give you a visual as to where this stuff um the your images are going to go so this morning somebody was looking for a um crafting image so once i pulled in the mug design um we're going to hit images and 
um, somebody was looking for a crafting one. So I typed in the word crafting. I think that they wanted, I can't, I'm crafting today, um, which is a great one. So I want to just show you where to find that. I did type in crafting and here, see, there's some that I know came with, uh, that came in the same image set. So I'm going to hit this little eye with the circle and go to view image sets. And then I've I'm automatically transported to the image set called Crafters Gonna Craft. So um, let's pick a few here. Uh, how about I can't, I'm crafting today. And I love this one, must make stuff. Um, and let's see what else. Um, craft room is my happy place. Crafting is the best medicine. All of these would look really good on a mug, I think. So, um, and one of the things, now, if you are going to do, uh, infusible ink, it, it can be a little difficult to weed, okay? It's a different feel to it. So, it can be a little difficult to weed. So, some of these things, these letters think in terms of size. If this was going to be put on a shirt, it wouldn't be that difficult to weed because the letters would be bigger, but it's going to be on a smaller mug. So um, when you're choosing some of these, you might consider um, simplifying them a little bit. Um, so let's choose, for instance, um, let me just choose one, two, there's that one's pretty simple. Um, let's think about choosing this because we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. So here's our, here's our, just like our basic design. And, um, we'll just talk a little bit about, I'm just going to move this over. We'll talk a little bit about these images. So first, when you pull in these images, the first thing you have to think of in terms of using infusible ink is, um, is, about the colors. So these images, obviously, if you wanted to do in vinyl or in, in iron-on, you could do that and it would be layered. But in fusible ink, you don't layer it. You actually piece it together, okay? So one of the things that you might want to do here is you might this is what I would do is immediately I'm going to attach them so that all all of the colors are sort of added into one color. So I hit attach here and they all turn into one color. But um, this one here is one single color. So let me just talk about that. So this one's one single color and has all these little dots here. Well, I know for a fact that those little dots are going to drive me crazy to weed. So I need to contour them out. So sometimes an image doesn't really fit in what you want, um, you know, the material that you have to think about that, you know, so some things, maybe it was designed to be in iron on or vinyl, and this would be easy to weed in vinyl, but not so much um, with infusible ink. So let us go down to our favorite place, which is down here. And it's called contour. And we're going to get rid of all those little dots just by hitting contour. And you will see there are all of our letters and the inside of the letters. And on the right-hand side, if you scroll, scroll, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the dots. And rather than trying to touch on these dots and turn them off, I would just go and use the right-hand um bar and just get rid of all of these little dots. Okay. And I'm doing that and it will make life so much easier when I go to weed it. Okay. I'm almost done here. So they're all gone. And when I come back, you'll notice that all the dots are gone. So that makes it, it's going to make it easier. Now this one here, I love this. I love this saying, but I'm thinking about infusible ink and I'm thinking this might be troublesome to make because we know that these letters are going to be a lot smaller because they have to fit on this, 
right? That's the size of the mug. So meaning we have to make it like maybe this size. Can you imagine weeding a fusible ink with this? It's just going to be awful. So I think this is an image that we'll have to save for some other reason, maybe in vinyl um, or, or, you know, in it. it uh, iron-on, but not infusible ink. This, however, is a great image to think about doing for um, for a mug because even though these are kind of small, most of the letters are big, okay? Um, and this, I think, will, will look really great too. Now, one of the things that I've been trying to figure out, and this maybe is just my aesthetic, but... Um, should you have the same saying on both sides of your mug or should you have different sayings or um, should you have an image on one and the name on the other? So those are all things when you're designing a mug you need to kind of think about. Now to me, I think um, I like to have, I'd like to have the same image. So let's say we're going to use this must make stuff image. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this. All right. And I am going to decide what size. I think I kind of like this size. And they're both the same size because I duplicated from the image. But do I want for it to be cut out of the infusible ink or do I want to cut it out? Remember we talked about that? Like sometimes it's easier to put a square around it. And do I want the middle of my mug to have infusible ink? Like do I want the mug to be mostly white with the design being must make stuff like the infusible ink is that or do um do I want to um have a the infusible ink wrapping around the mug so there is that okay um so if you want to for instance uh make them separate what you would do is you would remove this background you, or you could do this, right? You'd select both of these and you would, let me see, it says it's to detach. So I think I'm going to, I have to detach and now I'm going to attach them both. Now they're going to move um, together instead of independently. Okay. Now, if I wanted to cut it out of the infusible ink, then I would put this sort of rectangle behind it and I would choose all of those images. And remember, this is now one layer must make stuff. So by choosing this, I have two layers and I would, um, I would normally, I would slice it, but for some reason it's not showing up as a sliceable image, which is weird. So let me see if I can't do this. No, no. <laughs> it's not working. So normally what I would do is I would take and maybe I'll detach it first and then do this and no, not saying slice, which is weird. Okay. So normally what I would do is take my welded or my, um, or my attach image and yeah, that's what it is. I didn't have it as weld. Okay. And then I would select both and now I have slice as an option. So once I do that, I would then peel off these things and you see I would have, this is my original, this is what cut through with my cookie cutter, and this is my dough that's left. Okay. So this is if I wanted to cut it out in um, infusible ink and have infusible ink all over the mug. Okay. So um, there is that. And uh, let's see, the same, you could do the same thing with the I can't um, crafting today. Um, we can just go back and unslice all this. See if that, I love this I can't um, crafting today um, image. And I actually, that was the first mug that I made. Maybe that's why I love it so much. But um, so here we go. Here's my... Uh, same thing that I'm doing. I'm taking my, I can't, I'm crafting today. Put my image in the back. Okay. And there we 
go. I'm, I think I'll, I'd like to have two of them. And so I duplicate it like this. Now, one thing to remember, and I am going to get to the sublimation. Believe me, I'm getting there. Um, but one thing to remember here is that um, you can only slice if the items are one-on-one. -on -one. So you cannot slice um, more than two layers at a time. So that's what I'm doing is welding. So I think this is going to look good. I'm going to select both of these and slice, and then I can uh, do it this way, or I could cut it this way. So think of it in that, in those terms, I could cut it plain like this, um, or we could put a square around it to make it easier to cut, or you can cut it out of the infusible ink. Now, what about inf what about um, sublimation? Okay, so let's think of that. Now, remember, you can have a sublimation printer. It can be independent of your uh, design space, or you can integrate it in with design space, okay? So let me um, start with, I'll save this so that I can save and give it to you. Uh, crafting mugs. And I created a little uh, category for mugs. So I'm going to save that to mugs. Um, so let's talk about the sublimation. So we're going to start new. And what I like to do here again is I like to start with projects and find that, that mug setup and just start with um, a small straight edge mug um, so that you can kind of see how are my images going to turn up on this, okay? So this is just for visual for me. Um, and then I'm going to go to images and I am going to look for my friend's image sets or you can do other things such as Wonder Woman, here's friends right here. You could do up. Um, you could do anything that is showing as a printable. So if you wanted to, you could even just type the word printable here and see all the different printables that you could try with this. Also, images can be converted to a printable format, okay? So consider that. All right. So what we're looking at, though, is um, images that are sort of complex that we don't want to layer. Okay. And, um, and we also know because my sister is, is um, my sister is a friends fiend, we're going to type in friends and hopefully it will bring up. Yep. Warner Brothers Friends, the television set, uh, television series. So we'll work on these ones just so that you know. And then, but there are so many that you can do this with. So I'm just using this as an example. So you see here um, that they had some, they have some really simple and some pretty complex images. One of the ones that I chose, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to choose that one, is the Central Perk one. Um, and then they have this lobster one, this, I'd rather be watching friends. We were on a break. Um, and then there's, uh, like there's a pretty mug, like a, a coffee, like a latte mug. And then you could even do these umbrellas if you want, or any of these, um, the umbrellas are kind of cute. I hadn't even thought about it. Um, and then there's these things like, how you doing? Which is what, um, Joey used to say, I think. And so, um, so there's a lot to choose from. Now I did purchase these when they were on a, a mystery box, digital mystery box. So that that's why I have them <laughs> just to sort of let you know how it, how um how I got them so if you want them now you have to you still have to purchase them okay so let me uh pull these few in and I can show you what I did to make them easy to sublimate okay so they obviously they come in and they're very large um and some of them are pretty complex and so here here's let's look at the central perk one first it is Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
eight cuts for this. And uh, that's a lot. So Plus, if I were to cut it out, look at these very thin, you know, the steam coming off the off of the coffee cups. So I think what I'd like to do is um, use offset on this because I think it would look nicer with uh, with an offset around. And in fact, that's what I did with this mug. So I used an offset. Let me show you how I did that. So it's selected. I'm going to choose offset. And I did choose that rounded corner. And I hit apply. And it came up as gray. Well, my sister doesn't like the color gray. So I thought that I would change the color. And you can do that. Um, I chose red because I thought it looked good with the word central. And it kind of makes it jump out. So um, um, that's what I did, and I'm just going to make sure these two are together. I'm just moving this out of the way. And so then I select them both, and now what I'm going to do is flatten the image, okay? So go over here, down here. See, I don't know if you can see that, but there is this, flatten. When you want to do a print then cut, and this is for sublimation too, you need to flatten your image. So by flattening your image, it becomes one layer. Okay, so here it is, one layer. Now, um, you can size it the whatever way you want. I sized it so that um, it would be like in the middle of the mug because of the design. So that's the way I sized it for this one. But for this one, I'd rather be watching Friends. I thought, okay, let's do offset on this one. And so I did offset, chose that cornery thing and apply and it came up as black. Now I left it as black, but I could change it to different colors. In fact, I could still change this to different colors. And, um, but I think red is kind of a central color to friends. So I don't know, I could change the background to be, I don't know, blue. How about like a royal blue or something? So here is I'd rather be watching Friends. Now, notice this down at the bottom, the television series. And then there's also, very small here, a trademark under Friends because of the way that the, the lo that's a logo. So there's a trademark. Okay, now, um, so I need to incorporate all of that. So I'm going to select both the offset and the image. And again, I'm going to flatten it. So now I have a nice flattened image and it has all of that information there. And it looks really good, I think. I actually resized it so that I could put two of them. Um, Okay, here. So I could make them two of them. So here's one, and then I duplicated it for another. Now, this one, this particular type, I'm not going to have to worry about. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about cutting out because when I have this offset around it, it's sort of, you know, just kind of like covers that area. So cutting it out on design space, in this case, these little white pieces will cu cut out, which is nice because then you'll see the actual back of the mug in there. But in this case, no, it won't work. Now, Offset is still in beta. I have to say that. So there are some things that are not going to work with um, with offset still. And I don't know if like maybe this lobster one, let me just show you, let's choose offset. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. But there are still some times. Yeah. So, okay. So I did offset and look, this part here, the lobster part is not showing up but this part is and you can get around that if you want by choosing contour and choosing to remove these contours out boop there we go all right so if i made this to the back and then i have now this is black so i got to change the color on that so let me change it to this sort of blue 
And then you have You're My Lobster. And then it says Friends, the television series. If you don't know that You're My Lobster saying, it's like um, it, lobsters mate for life. And so I believe it was Ross that said that to Rachel at the end. So, um, whoops. So that's what that's about. So then you could then take these two images and flatten it and resize it. Okay, so now when it comes time to actually printing these out, um, the same holds true, the same principles of print and cut hold true for us. Um, so let me just choose offset for this real quick. And I'm going to flatten this just so you can see. We probably don't need this one. So let's um, hide these things just because they're, they're just there to help us. So this is still, I know, is too big. So I need to resize this some. Okay. Now you have to decide, do I want to put two, like one on each side, or do I want to put the image in the middle of the mug, which I did with the Central Perk one? Um, but I think the You're My Lobster one, I would duplicate that. And that's because I want to have two on the mug. Okay. And then this, I'd rather be watching Friends. I, I have it already duplicated. Maybe I don't want this here maybe I just want to put that there or maybe not I don't know but let's let's have all of these now when you go to print it out using design space you'll notice that it doesn't corral them all in a good way so you're going to be using a lot more sublimation uh, ink and paper by having to have two different images. So how do we get around that? Well, we do the same thing we did with the stickers and we insert a shape, a square, and we unlock the square and we then resize the shape to be our maximum allowable space, which is 6.75 for either the width or the height, and then the other one is 9.25. Remember this? Um, so this is just a for a visual, okay? So we're going to arrange it to the back so we can see our little images. And then I'm going to take all of my images that I want to cut out and I'm going to arrange them myself on the paper. And they cannot be touching, but you can move them. So I could move this around like this like this. Um, and I can put these here. And here we go. So now I'm able to get all of those images onto one sheet of paper. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to attach them. I don't need this box anymore. Get rid of the box. Okay. So when I hit make it, it all comes on one paper, paper, and I didn't have to resize anything, okay? So this, as far as Cricut Design Space is concerned, is a print and cut project. So I'm going to hit continue, and I need to send this to my printer. And this is where it gets a little bit different than using a regular printer. So this is how you integrate using your uh, sublimation printer with Cricut Design Space. Now, clearly, you could also use the sublimation printer on its own, but this is how you would work with them together. And I actually like doing it this way because I have a little bit of a little bit more control over it. Okay. Now, one thing that we have to do is we have to mirror because even though it's sublimation, we still have to mirror because it's going to be cut out in, um, on this paper. And this is the back side of the paper. And so when it gets cut out, we're going to turn it over and put it on the mug like this. Okay. So we have to go in and edit and turn on the mirror. Here it is. This is a toggle switch. And if you can't read it, then you have the mirror on. <laughs> okay. So turn on the mirror. 
then we have to send it to the printer. So um, again, very similar to a print then cut. But in this case, I have, look, I have four. One is a fax, which I don't even use, but I have four different printers on my network. This is my regular printer, HP NV. This is my terrible Canon printer that I can't get to work. And then here is my sublimation printer, the Epson. So I'm going to choose Epson and I'm going to choose use system dialog. And I will turn off add bleed because I don't need bleed. Bleed is good for sticker cutting and stuff. I mean, you could add in, you know, it's sort of one of those maybe, but um, I just turned it off. So then I hit print. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm printing out with the best settings I possibly can, like it's a photo, because I want to use all the inks and I want it to come out like super sharp. So in this case, you'll have to work around your settings. But if you have one of those Epson ones like I bought, I actually changed the media type to photo matte paper and I changed the quality from normal to best. Okay. And once you've done this once, you could use the last use settings, which is what I've done here. Okay. So I want it to be the best quality. So then I'm going to hit print and it's going to go to my printer. Now, one other step here, okay? Because the printer wasn't designed as a sublimation printer because we did like kind of a hack and worked around it, you do need to hit OK on the printer because the printer is like, you don't have the right paper in there. Okay, so um, you do have to hit OK twice, which is what I'm doing over here. And then it will start to do the print. Now it takes a little bit longer for that print to come out. Um, and that's okay. Sure. You know, it's my pleasure, Susan. So it's going to take a little while for it to cut out and that's okay. But once I get done, I'm going to have a sheet just like when we're making stickers. I'm going to have a sheet that has that the sensor bars all around it in that black square. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on to my mat and then I'm going to cut it out. So what do you cut out with? I have been using copy paper as a cut setting. So I went to browse materials and I chose paper. And you'll see down here, there's copy paper right under construction paper, copy paper, 20 pound. Um, I feel like that is closest to um, what the sublimation printer is. Okay, so I chose that and then I hit done. That's what I chose. And then I would take my print, which is still printing, obviously. I would take my, um, my paper and put it on to my mat and then send it through my machine. And the end result is, let me show you. The end result is this. Now it is still backwards, we want it backwards, okay? So this one says, I'd rather be watching Friends, and this is how it cut out. There's no streaks here, it's really nice, okay? Um, and I also did, for, for people that are not into Friends, I also did a couple of uh, Wonder Woman ones. See that? Really cute. And then I did these other ones that I found. This girl is on fire. Creativity takes courage. Um, I did a whole bunch here, and we can do a couple of them. Um, so I, I think we won't wait for it to... Um, for it to cut out because that will just take up time. You realize you need to put it in the machine. It cuts out, then you peel it off the mat, okay? So we're gonna kind of skip that process and I'm gonna bring you down to, um, I'm gonna turn on my mug press and I'm gonna bring you down to my work surface so you can see what I'm doing. So here we go. I have a couple of mugs, okay? These are the 12 ounce mugs. You'll also need some tape and 
the heat resistant tape. So you can buy the Cricut heat resistant tape or you can buy somebody else's heat resistant tape. I don't think it much matters. Just don't use regular scotch tape, okay? And then we have our our little images. So I have this, I'd rather be watching friends and I could choose to just put it on one side, but I think I'm gonna put it on both sides, okay? So I, I feel like I'm gonna put it here and then opposite on this end, but I don't necessarily have to. Um, but this is just my personal choice. So I'm gonna take some of this tape I saw somebody who had a tape dispenser with their heat resisting tape and I was like, oh, I want one of those, but I don't have one. So, um, okay. So I'm just going to put my tape on the side here. So I'm going to take and decide where I want to put this. I think right here looks good. Okay. So I just take my tape and behold it like this and put the tape on and really we want it nice and tight on there so it's I think I'm going to put a couple like maybe four pieces of the tape on there there's three now it won't matter um like it won't it won't inhibit your image if you if you um, have the tape on there. So I could put tape over the entire thing and it wouldn't um, inhibit it, but you, you know, you'll be wasting tape if you did that. But what will matter is if it's not on there really, really good. I feel like in the mug press, this is going to be okay. But if I was a little nervous about it, I could also put a little piece of tape there. And then I'm gonna flip it over and sort of eyeball it a little bit, but make sure that it's about at the same place, okay? Need more tape. Maybe I should get one of those tape dispensers. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm using my teeth. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Okay, need a little more tape. And Sorry, that's my chair. It's a very, rather old chair. Um, okay, so I think to me this is going to be as close to perfect as I can get. I do need it to be, yeah, over here. And they're both the same size, but, you know, it's going to be hard to check and see that you did it exactly so I mean you could someone like Annette would probably measure and all of that but me I, I'm an eyeball kind of person so I am going to just take my chances okay so I got my tape pretty much done here and then I just have to wait for my mug press to heat up and I just heard it saying that it's ready all right, so there we go, just like that, okay? Now, um, let me see if I can pu pull this over so that you can see it. So this is a mug press, in case you haven't seen it. Everybody's seen it, but I just want to point out a couple of things. One, it has only one button on, <laughs> okay? And these little uh, light-up lights, uh, oh, by the way, be careful because it's hot. I burned myself right here last week and I didn't realize I did it until afterwards and it is turning into a scab now. So it has these five little like lights and that is a progress uh, meter, let's say. And then it has this lever, you push down on the lever. Same thing when you're doing a uh, sublimation, I'm going to take and put my mug in here gently feed it in and then i'm going to make sure that it's within that space and i'm going to press down okay and you'll see that those little lights start coming on and it will go all the way up to five now i'm going to move this simply because i heard my printer um 
be done so I can then show you the whole thing about the cutting out. Okay, that's my sublimation done. Isn't it great? And all I have to do now is put it on a mat. Just like this. And I put it up in the corners correctly. Make sure it's not turned around because we found out that causes problems with the cutout process. Remember, I chose copy paper. So I'm just going to put this in the machine and cut it out. See that? So while we're waiting for that first mug, you can get into like kind of like a, a little bit of a, a uh, process, uh, like a what do you, what do you, what do you, system process. You know, um, what do they call that when, you know, Henry Ford? Ugh, I don't have the word, but like a factory process or whatever. There it goes. And then um, I can probably do my my uh, Wonder Woman on there, which I kind of like. Fierce. Um, it's okay. I'm using a purple mat, Paralita, but you don't have to use a purple mat. In fact, um, I'm, I'm a sort of a, a matte rebel <laughs> because um, although I generally should be using red, I'm sorry, red. Oh, maybe they should make a red one. Uh, I generally should be using the green one. Um, I use the purple ones because I'm too lazy to wash my mats on a regular basis. And they stay stickier longer. Um, the only thing is when you first start with a purple mat, it's extremely sticky and could cause problems if you're working with paper. So, like, I start them off and I'll use, like, with with vinyl or something else and then um and then I will uh then I will graduate them to paper because they'll be like about sticky yeah I don't use the lint roller either because I ran out of lint roller and yeah the, I would definitely recommend doing the lint roller by the way this is what um it looks like after you take it off from out of the mug it still has the design, but it's much less um, concentrated. I wouldn't use this again, but I suppose you could try. Um, I just wanted to save that for showing you. Yes, definitely use a lint roller, um, or you can use, like, wipe it down with a uh, microfiber cloth. Um, and, and that will be, that will be fine. I am not using it cause I ran out of it and I forgot to put it on my Costco order. Um, so there you go. And meanwhile, we're just watching this, uh, this thing cut. Dryer sheets are a good idea as well. Almost done cutting. And then I'll show you as it gets off. 20 mugs. I'm a part of order. Ordered 20 mugs. You So you got mug orders now. That is so awesome. Yeah, they sit, come out so professional. So I could see you doing this with logos. Like company logos. Um, and... Yeah, coffee filters would work too. Something that was lint free or that would take up lint um, clearly. So, okay, so it's cut and I'm just going to peel off the excess. And then I'm going to bend my mat and make sure that I don't, um, don't make this sort of what's the word uh like rounded uh, i'm having trouble with words today why am i having such so much trouble with words uh rolled distorted i don't know what i'm thinking what word i'm thinking of don't want them to get all misshapen not sure 
Yep, easy, easy peasy, okay? And that's what I've got. Now see that here? This is cut through. Now one thing you don't have to worry about is that we didn't use bleed, but this is why we didn't use bleed, because it's not gonna show up. There's no ink there, so it's not going to sort of show up, if that makes any sense to you. Um, and here is this one. It's cut out in these little places. And there's our Central Perk one. You see the difference between this is the original, this, this is the used one. Okay. Now I just heard the mug press saying it's done. I'm going to lift the lever and take out my mug. Now, must tell you, this is really super hot. And you can actually, if you, if you look close enough, you can see that there's some steam coming off. I did not use butcher paper. Some people seem to think that you'd need butcher paper, which I did. I haven't used it at all. Um, but it is still really, really hot, and there are a little bit of fumes. I have my windows open, so it doesn't really matter. So just try not to um, use it in an area that uh, that is contained or small or keep a window open or something. Now, also, I just put this down on my desk, but I'm not going to put it down on something like this because it's plastic. You see this? It's plastic. I'm not going to put it down on that because um, it will warp it. It's so hot. And, you know, the me in me says, I have to see it, but I, w this is how I got burnt the last time. So let me peel this one side at least. There you go. Now tell me, does that not look super professional? <laughs> I think it does. Um, and I think my sister's going to be most pleased with this mug. I'm just going to turn it so that I can get the other side. Hold on. I'll get back in into the frame in a second. Yeah. So clearly it's better for you to wait until it's cooled off, but we're on a time crunch here. So um, we'll have a look. And I'm just peeling it, probably not the best practice, but I'm peeling it with my weeding tool. There you go. All right, I'd rather be watching Friends. I think that turned out really, really well. And my sister's going to be happy with both this one and the Central Perk one. Really cute. And also very professional looking, I think. Definitely a pro mug in my opinion. But be careful when you're peeling it. Make sure you cool it off. Don't be like me. Um, follow the rules, okay? So that is it for um, for today's lesson for today's Cricut Chat. I hope you've learned a lot. I did cram a lot of stuff in there, but I kind of wanted to take care of, um, you know, how we're using uh, sublimation on in design space on um, on a mug, using the mug press, but also knowing how to size them correctly by using that mug setup. I will give you um, a couple of files in the description. Uh, I can't give you the ones for the friends because they are copyright protected. Um, but if you purchase them, you could do the same thing as I did. Same thing with the, with the Wonder Woman thing. So what I'm going to do, I'll save this, but I unfortunately can't give it to you because that would be a breach of, um, a breach of their copyright. So I'm just going to write Franz, Friends mugs. Okay, I'm going to choose mugs as my collection and save. So I'm going to see, I think I have a couple of really fun, yeah, I do. Let me just go back and show you. I have a couple of fun that include Cricut Access images um, that are really nice that you can try out, including the craft 
crafting mugs. I'll give you that one. And then where's the other one? Oh, this one, Girl Power. This Girl Power, which I found these printables. And I cut these all out using um, my sublimation printer. So I'll give you this file as well, okay? Um, that's it for today. I am, uh, I am, getting ready for tomorrow. I'm trying to think what tomorrow is. I think it's a flower. Um, I have to check my, my, um, my schedule. I'm thanking you very much. Thank you for, uh, for, uh, staying with me and appreciate it. Don't forget to put your name in for that, for that giveaway. And there's also another giveaway going on with, um, with Cricut itself, they're giving away a mug press and a maker. So, no, Mar Marciella, Mar Maricella, Maricella, sorry. Maricella, you cannot use any old mug, okay? You do need, you don't have to use the Cricut mug, but you do need to use a sublimation mug. And these have a special coating on them. You can't see it, but it does have a coating that will allow that ink to turn to gas and that gas will go into the mug. So you can't go to like the Dollar Tree and pick up a dollar mug and just do it. You have to use something that is rated for sublimation. Okay. So I hope this has been helpful, everyone. I'll see you later. Um, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, have a great day. I hope you get some crafting in. Take care. Bye.